It's FNX. I'm Julie Kramer here with Tori Amos. Uh, we, we've already got her all messy. You know, there, there's ink everywhere. Here for five minutes, and we've already destroyed her. So, <laughs> sorry about that. Hi, Julie. Hello. Now, I, I got your present to start off our thing. Last time you were here, we talked about reincarnation, and I uh, told you about this book. So I, I actually went out and I bought it for you. Many Lives, Many Masters. Have you guys read this? No, it I is don't have so it. unbelievable. You can read it in two hours because once you start, you can't stop. So I, I noticed you brought a book in. So, so this will get me to New York tonight. Oh, I'm telling one. You know, if you're a believer, you you got to read it. I don't want to give it away. So a, a little something because you always come up to the station and you're always nice about it. And it's certainly a schlep. So thank you. Okay. Now back to the interview. <laughs> so you go on at 745 tonight at the Tweeter Center. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we want to let everyone know because, and there is an opening act. Always, there's an opening act. Okay. And it changes every five shows. And the opening act, um, I guess you could call it a winner. All right. There were many, many, many tapes submitted by quote-unquote unsigned artists mm -hmm. or artists that haven't had them the exposure. And we, um, we picked maybe seven, I think six or seven, six. And Chlorophyll is now opening for us cool. on and this leg. What time did they go on? Whenever um, the sound checks finish. <laughs> okay. They go on about 7-ish. Yeah. Okay. So that way people can check them out. And you go on at 7.45. On time. And yeah. to on time, yeah. Right. Well, you know, the thing is about the tweeter is once... I think you have to be done by 11 o'clock. Yeah, that's the problem. They, they pull the plug. I mean, they, they do. They literally... And that's why Alanis and I, since it's a double show, each of us do 75 minutes. And if I go over time, then I'm cutting into her time. And right. You know, it's about being respectful on both sides. No, you, you, I'm sure you're very good about it. Um, now, how did the two of you decide to do this tour? She called me up and said, do you want to do a double bill? I said, um, well, obviously I'm going to take my own production like you would, and we'll be two pirate ships, and it worked out. So Now, do you hang out at all? We see each other every day. We have a few minutes sometimes, like I'm doing, I've been doing interviews all morning since 9 o'clock, and she'll be sound checking when I go and get to see my chef, and then I'll be sound checking when she's eating, but we run across each other for a few minutes every day, which is good. We yeah. giggle. It's not like you go shopping or, or even have the time, I would guess. There's not a lot of time to go shopping. So you take a chef. What are you having for dinner tonight? Um, probably fresh fish. Because, see, we're going to the Midwest. Oh, and yeah. And you, you just don't make that choice when you, when you go there. So now you have a chef that goes with you. Um, is this something you've always done so you can have food exactly the way you want it? Yeah, we have many chefs on the road. and um, That's nice. It's good. Yeah. Because you so. don't always have to go to, like, a Bob's Big Boy or something, you know? Like, you got... Well, in the cruise, they need, for them to do all you ask them to do, they need good food. Yeah. The Guinness with the little um, turny top at the bottom on the buses. Right. They need good little perks. So do you pick a menu or do they, they basically know what you like and then you kind of take it from there? Well, there's chefs that are cooking for the crew. There's a chef cooking for Alanis and her side and there's a chef cooking for me. Wow. And um, a lot of chefs. That's a lot of cooks. Different and different needs. Like to tofu does not walk into my dressing room. No. Brown rice. Out of here. Not just not part of my world. Um, so I'm going to take it. You're not a vegetarian because you're eating fish. Are um, you a meat loader? Are you into no, like the meaty I'm, thing? I'm not into that, but I'm really into like Mediterranean cuisine. Mm, like a fresh fish with like a couscous, something like that maybe? Mm, not big on couscous. Don't mix carbs or protein. Oh, so you're doing... Okay, now let me ask you this. Is this the Suzanne Summers thing? I or don't know. All right. Well, let me ask you. Are you doing a thing where you eat your protein separately from your carbs and your fruit on an empty stomach? Yeah, but I'm not much of a fruit person, so I'll do a cappuccino for breakfast. Right. And I haven't eaten lunch yet. I'll eat lunch now at about 3, 30, 4 o'clock. Would you have a protein or a carb? It, it depends what's better that day. You know, if he's got great fish or... Right. A, a, so you'll do a fish with vegetables, but then you eat a carb later on. Like, you do your proteins and your carbs completely. separate. Yeah. That's, like, the big, like, thing now that everyone's doing, which I actually started yesterday, and I'm trying to do it. And it's, um, it's an interesting and, and a little difficult at first. Well, you, what happens is when you have to go play a piano, 
pretty full on at soundcheck and then the show you don't want your food all over the piano right and it makes things much more streamlined so do you find eating a protein gives you more energy than a carb yeah i do but for me it's about not mixing them up so you feel like instead of um playing the piano i want to crawl inside it and Right. Sing vampire songs and go to sleep. Exactly. It's at Tori Amos here in the FNX studios. It just seems to be all the rave right now, though. You probably just do it out of figuring it out that way, but it, it, the diet craze, that is like all the rave right now. I don't know about... Maybe that's how you stay so thin. Well, maybe. I, I also think that um, I pick the right clothes for myself. You know, you that's have good. to... I think sometimes you... Wear black. Stripes yeah. that go down. Yeah. I know. Believe me. <laughs> Don't I know. Do you cook at home? My husband's a very good cook. Yeah. So you do the dishes, he cooks? No, I don't do the dishes. He cooks. <laughs> and does the dishes. I, I pick the wine. That's my thing. So what do you do on, do you ever have downtime? Like, what do you do when you're like, oh, I'm just going to, do you relax ever? I think we relax. Our bus is very much a little social bus. I travel with the band. So the crews are with them, with themselves. And I am, um, I mean, I'm not into yoga or any of that kind of stuff. You read? I'm into reading. I'm into um, dancing, but I can't dance. But we have salsas up and down on the bus, which is good. It's bus surfing. Right. So especially when you have a bus driver that doesn't um, hit the shoulder that much. That's what about when you're good. not on the bus, like when you're hanging out at home? Or do you ever hang out at home? When I hang out at home, I run my boat. I like racing. A little speedboat I have. Oh, that's nice. So, um, now, I, I'm, last time you were here, we talked about a lot of different things, so I'm going to touch on a couple of them. Um, last time you were here, you were taping all the shows to put out the live disc, which is now coming out. Yeah. All right. You, listen, you told me that you listened to songs two weeks after you recorded them. How did you, after all those shows, sit down and pick all the songs that you wanted for that? Because it must have been incredible to to go through every show diligently and pick out the songs well we're ant fuckers yeah so that that's how we do it okay and what happens is um it's sort of like the nba playoffs and if you can imagine we got to the semifinals you have 120 shows you narrow it down and you decide okay we have four precious things we have seven um, waitresses, and we start running them off against each other, sort of like the Knicks and the Bulls. I have the track listing here, so we can we can talk about it. Did you decide to pick things that, because we also talked about last time you were here, about putting together a B-side CD. Did you try to pick things that maybe were a little different for people on the live CD? Things that I think mm, showed that the band, for some reason, it all came together. There are tracks that I wanted to have on it, but they just, out of 120 shows, these ones stepped forward, and I think you give the tracks that have that something they deserve to get on. And it's not about a greatest hits record. That isn't my interest. Right, because it's not a greatest hit. No, that's not. No. I mean, it's not, it's, you know. It's about this could have been a show, this would have been our ideal show, the performance level, and it could have worked thematically. Structurally, it could have worked. And um, that's sort of how we, we did it. We spent a lot of time running them off against each other and putting it together. Okay, so I just want to mention to everyone, the live CD is the second CD uh, to Venus and Back, which comes out September 21st. We're, to we're talking to Tori Amos, if you just tuned in. And uh, when did you come up with... The, the music for the new CD, which is part of this. While we were choosing the live CD. You were writing songs for a new CD? At the same time, yeah. Man. You, do, do you, do like, take, like, Geritol, or I don't know? What, I mean, you seem to me to be very, very busy. I mean, you were here quite a bit. You seem to be working a lot. You seem to always be on tour. I, I'm kind of, I, I don't know how you do it. Maybe it's the protein and carb thing. I don't know about that. I think, I don't know. creatively, you get a lot of... Um, if you're lethargic and you sit around for too long, it's not that inspiring. I mean, I can do that. I'll take the time and do that with my girlfriends. And we'll sit around the pool and have a good mar margarita week. Mm. And then it's time to do something else. 
and creatively, it, it really is like a drug. Yeah, once you start, you can't stop? Yeah, there's a... People say that getting on the treadmill gives you a something. And I haven't found that yet. You know, I get a little bit of a buzz, but it's nothing like when you're playing music with other people. Or, right. It's a real um, high, actually. Okay, so the question I asked you last time you were here was, um, <clears throat> will you be putting on a B-Sides record? So the, the imports that you have, a lot of the B-Sides that came out as imports and a lot of cover songs, will that ever make it domestically? No idea. Okay, because I know you were thinking about it, and I thought maybe that's how you sort of incorporated some other songs that you liked in the live record, maybe sort of. No, I really have no idea if there's going to be a B-Side record. One day I think that'll happen, but um, right now the B-Sides for all this work are live tracks right. that came down in the semifinals and could have made the record. Most of them are piano vocals, and... Um, there were different votes going on right. about which combination was going to make the record. And at the final hour, Cooling and Cloud on My Tongue made, actually Cooling, Mr. Zebra, Cloud on My Tongue made the final right. pick. But the other ones could have been there. Well, you know, there's a future record down the road. You know what I mean? There's another B-Sides. There could be another live album. I mean, I think it's nice you're putting out a double disc and having the live record. And that the B-Sides are haven't ever been put out before. These are live versions of these songs. They're all from the 98 tour. And um, it's good that we're not going back into the library yet, if you know what I mean. Right. No, I, I, I think it's nice you're putting out a double CD. And that CD to Venus and Back will be in stores uh, September 21st. I can't believe it's already almost September. So are you going to tour the record on your own? I know you're doing this with Atlantis. And then do you come back on your own? Not here. We're just, we're going to continue... Um, I think we're doing to Dallas and back, yeah, <laughs> for about 10 days, two weeks. And then do you go to Europe or any of then that? Then we'll go to Europe. But um, right now we're not touring in Europe. I'll just go and do promo. All right, as we wrap up the interview with Tori Amos, and then we'll, we'll play Bliss, um, I notice on a lot of your things, and, and also on a lot of the imports, you do a lot of nice photography, well, uh, the person taking the pictures, but... Are you, do you come up with a lot of the ideas for the photographer, or are you just, like, you know what I'm saying? I pick, really You photograph very well, first of all, but are you like, oh, let me do this, let me do that? Well, I pick photographers that um, I think are, have a special take on things, and that want to be collaborative. I don't want to cross their creative realm, because... You know, everybody feels like they need to be a cook in their own kitchen. Yeah. But there is a place where I think, um, when I talk to them about the songs and what they're shooting and the character of the song, sometimes it gives them a lot of information and they'll approach visually the whole project differently. Would you ever consider modeling? Has anyone asked mm -hmm. you to? Like, what if it's Nothing. Calvin Klein came up to you and said, hey, you know, I like your music, will, will you model my jeans? No, but first of all, I'd have to lose 20 pounds to be in his jeans. And second of all, they're going to chop off all your bone structure anyway in a photograph because they have a concept of what is attractive, and it's not you anymore. What models go through, I know people are going to roll their eyes, but I find it really demoralizing. To be I mean, so thin? No, they get picked at all the time. They get picked at. Because all the makeup artists that I know and hair people, they'll tell you, even though some of them can be really hard to get along with, there is a thing where it's like um, you're, you are a mannequin to them. You're an object. You're a piece of meat. And you're making a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, I know what you're saying. Believe me, I know what you're saying. Yeah, but until you've been there and picked over, even if... Th these are my projects, and I'm footing the bill. So it's very different with a video director when he's like, well, you know, she looks like old saran wrap. Get her out of that. You know, they're talking about you, and this is your shoot. Right, right. No, I know you what know, you're saying. Then when it's not your shoot, and you're there being paid, yes, you're being paid a lot of money, and people think that they can treat you like... Old saran wrap. Yeah, and they do. And so I'm not... And trying to instill pity for anybody, but until you've been on that side of the camera and people have picked you apart, you have no idea what it's like. Yeah. And I know that's part of the, the terrain, 
if you're going to be a pine tree, you have to understand the needles. Right. But you have to, until you've seen it. All right, so we'll say the answer is no, you'll not model. <laughs> no, I would I would never do that to myself. It's demoralizing. But the photographs on the CDs and a lot of those import CDs are truly beautiful. So a lot of them are very nice. Well, a lot of that I've got to say, you always, for everybody out there, when you're picking um, photographers, it's about the lighting, sweetie. Yeah. You have to great lighting. And the airbrushing, but, you know. Of course. Um, all right, so let's play Bliss, and thank you very much for coming to the FNX Studios again. And I want to remind everyone, if you're going to the Tweeter Center tonight, that Tori goes on at 745, so get there early. Plan on it. Okay. Now, now that we've got that, I just want to make sure people understand because, you know, that's the way it is. All right, so let's talk about Bliss and then let's play it uh, once again to Venus and back in stores uh, September 21st. So do you want to talk about the tune? Do you have anything to say about it? or? I think on this record, we were really fascinated about sound effects and um, making sound effects another instrument. So the new album is really, um, I think there's a balance of keyboards and piano but this is a new instrument this is a third thing I've produced of my own work and I'm working with Mark and Marcel again engineering and the structure of the songs it wasn't just about the songs themselves it was about a sonic geometric shape for each one of them hmm. so we spent hours and hours and days and days in the mix room working with um, millions of little boxes with buttons what shape is bliss? If you had to give it a shape, what shape is it? Is it round? Is it square? Is it, a, you know, what it's, is it? It's very long. It's very long. Okay. It's uh, Tori Amos, and this is bliss once again, 745. And uh, thank you again, as always. Thank you very much. It's the FNX Radio Network.